Have you ever found yourself in a situation where everything seemed impossible? We've all been there, haven't we? Standing on the precipice of an enormous mountain, staring at a challenge so vast it seems insurmountable. The term impossible is a heavy one, filled with a sense of finality, a sense of defeat. It's interesting to know how different people approach these situations. Some recoil, paralyzed by fear, believing that they cannot overcome the obstacle in front of them. They see a wall, a dead end. On the other hand, some face these challenges with determination, viewing them as opportunities to grow, to learn, to become stronger. They see the wall, but they also see a hammer, a tool to break it down. These perspectives are fascinating, aren't they? But what if I told you there is a way to turn the impossible into possible? In the realm of spirituality, faith is the secret key that unlocks the door to the impossible. This statement, as profound as it is, offers us a glimpse into the transformative power of faith. Whether we look towards the east or the west, north or south, faith is a universal concept that transcends boundaries, cultures and religions. It's a deeply personal and intimate belief that exists within each of us, a beacon of hope and strength in times of uncertainty and adversity. Across the world, faith is perceived and practiced differently. Some see it as a belief in the unseen, while others regard it as a deep trust in the divine. It's revered in different forms and languages, yet the essence remains the same. It's the unwavering belief that there's a higher power guiding and protecting us, a power that we commonly refer to as God, or in Islamic tradition as Allah. Throughout history, there have been countless stories of miracles, instances where the impossible became possible. Let's delve into a couple of these stories. Stories that are not just tales from the past, but are living examples of the power of faith in Allah. Take the story of a humble man named Abdul. He lived in a small village and his life was filled with hardships. He was poor and his family was struggling to make ends meet. But Abdul never lost his faith in Allah. He prayed every day, asking for a miracle to happen. And one day it did. A stranger came to their village seeking shelter and food. Abdul, despite his own struggles, welcomed him into his home. The stranger turned out to be a wealthy merchant who was so moved by Abdul's kindness and faith that he set up a business in the village, changing Abdul's life and that of his community forever. Then there's the story of Fatima, a young girl who was born with a condition that made it difficult for her to walk. Doctors had told her parents that she might never be able to walk normally. But Fatima had unwavering faith. She believed that Allah could make the impossible possible. Every night she would pray, asking for the strength to walk. Years passed and one day Fatima took her first unaided steps. Her doctors were astounded. They couldn't explain it medically, but for Fatima and her family it was clear. It was a miracle, a testament to her faith in Allah. Each of these stories is a testament to the power of faith in Allah. They show us that no matter how dire the situation, how impossible the circumstance, faith can work miracles. But these stories are not just about miracles. They are about the journey of faith, the power of prayer, and the belief in the divine. They remind us that miracles are not just about grand life-altering events, but about everyday acts of kindness, perseverance, and faith. These stories are testaments of the power of faith, but how can we harness this power in our own lives? The key to harnessing the power of faith is practice. Faith isn't a one-time event or a fleeting feeling. It's a journey, a constant endeavor, a continuous cultivation. It's like a muscle that needs to be exercised regularly to grow stronger. And how do we exercise this muscle of faith? We do it through practical means such as prayer, meditation, and acts of kindness. Prayer is the cornerstone of any faith. It's our direct line of communication with Allah. It's where we bear our souls, express our gratitude and seek guidance. But remember, prayer isn't just about asking, it's also about listening. It's a dialogue, not a monologue. So when you pray, take a moment to listen to that quiet voice within. That's Allah speaking to you. Meditation, on the other hand, is a quiet space we create within ourselves. It's where we silence the chatter of the world and tune into our own inner world. It's a space of deep reflection and self-awareness. Through meditation, we connect with our inner selves, and through this connection, we strengthen our connection with Allah. Acts of kindness, too, are an integral part of practicing faith. In the Quran, it is said that Allah is kind and loves kindness. 
So, when we extend kindness to others, we're essentially mirroring the attributes of Allah. Each act of kindness, no matter how small, is a step towards strengthening our faith. But let's not forget this practice of faith isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. It's not about how quickly you can reach the finish line, but about the journey and the perseverance it takes to keep going. Your faith will waver. There will be times of doubt and uncertainty, but that's okay. That's part of the journey. It's in these moments of wavering that we find opportunities to deepen our faith. So keep practicing, keep praying, keep meditating, keep being kind. Strengthen your faith muscle one day at a time. Practice makes perfect, but faith also requires patience. Patience is a virtue, especially when it comes to faith. As we navigate the winding roads of life, we encounter various challenges and obstacles that test our resolve. These trials and tribulations are not meant to break us, but to make us stronger, to mold us into better versions of ourselves. And in this journey, one quality stands out as paramount. That quality is patience. Patience, in essence, is the ability to endure hardship without complaint, to bear suffering with calmness and composure. It's not just about waiting, but about how we act while we wait. It's about maintaining faith and hope, even when the odds seem stacked against us. In the context of faith, patience takes on a deeper, more profound meaning. It becomes a form of worship, a testament to our trust in Allah. It's not just about enduring hardship, but about understanding that there is a divine plan at work, a plan that we may not fully comprehend, but one that we trust entirely. Patience is a virtue that allows us to keep our faith intact, even in the face of adversity. It enables us to remain steadfast and unwavering in our belief that Allah is always with us, guiding us, helping us, and watching over us. With patience we can weather any storm, endure any hardship, and overcome any obstacle. In the Quran, patience is often mentioned alongside faith. It's as if the two are inseparable, intertwined. One cannot exist without the other. The more patient we are, the stronger our faith becomes. And the stronger our faith, the more patient we become. Patience teaches us to surrender to Allah's will, to accept that we are not in control, and that ultimately, everything happens according to His plan. It teaches us to trust in His wisdom, His timing, and His mercy. So, when faced with a challenge that seems impossible to overcome, remember the virtue of patience. Remember that with patience, we can endure, we can persevere, and we can triumph. With patience and faith, the impossible becomes possible. So, the next time you face an impossible situation, remember this. Let's take a moment to reflect on what we've discussed so far. We've delved into the profound question of the impossible and how faith, particularly faith in Allah, has the power to transform impossibilities into possibilities. We've explored various stories of miracles, testaments to the incredible power of faith. We've also discussed the importance of practicing faith, of keeping it alive and vibrant in our daily lives. It's about more than just belief. It's about living that belief every single day. Furthermore, we've highlighted the virtue of patience. It's a trait that, when combined with faith, can work wonders. Life is full of challenges, and it's in overcoming these challenges that we truly grow. So cultivate these qualities in your life, nurture your faith, practice patience, and you'll be amazed at what you can achieve. With faith in Allah and patience, you can turn the impossible into the possible. Allah becomes jealous of his honor, and that is when the believer does something he has forbidden. Bukhari and Muslim Allah placed limitations and laws within which we must live our lives, and then he sent his prophets and messengers to convey those restrictions to the people. In this way, the evidence is established against the sinners because the messengers and prophets fulfilled their duty of informing us of the permissible and prohibited. In this hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warns the believers from occupying themselves in forbidden matters. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam worded it in a way so that a true believer would not even think about doing something forbidden. The believers are specifically pointed out because they should know better. The disbelievers might be engaging in forbidden things out of ignorance but a believer has no excuse. Therefore, there is a stern warning in this hadith to the believers from committing prohibited deeds. The hadith also mentions one of the attributes of Allah. 
Whenever we come across one of his attributes in the Quran or Hadiths, it should never be compared to his creation. Allah is nothing like his creation. He is far above and beyond his creation. As Muslims, we affirm and believe in all his attributes mentioned in the Quran and Hadiths without modality, resemblance and denial. Be sure to give a like to the video and to get more Islamic videos regularly, subscribe to our Islamic channel and press the bell icon next to it.